right, good morning. I had said I was going to come back in the Art of Positivity with markers. So that's what I am going to do. I have this package of markers that had been sent to me. Here's a printout. And then here's the actual colors. They're by color, yeah. They are alcohol-based. And when I made the swatches for these, I went ahead and put numbers together that I thought went well. Just to see some of them blend a little better than others. So anyway, I am going to take like these greens. Let's see. And we're just going to play today. These are dual tip markers. And I have number 311, number 318, and 372. Let's see if that's actually in this grouping. Hmm, right there. Okay, 372 and 311. So then the 318... I, uh, there's one with the 318 also in it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to start with. We're going to start on some leaves. So I'm going to start with my lighter color on the tip. And this paper is a nice, thick paper. So I don't see a problem using these markers at all. Okay, make sure the end here is wet. Then I'm going to come in with my next shade. And blend in. Markers are not that hard to do. You just have to learn with the blending. I'm going to come back with that first shade again and go between these. And see, then I've got it blended. Now I'm going to go to the darker shade and get right up here in this area. So, right there. Yeah, life, um, we did have our Christmas. It was fun. The kids came over. And um, now I'm going to go back to the medium to blend. We exchanged our gifts and everything and just played some games and had a good time. One thing I did get at Christmas was this from my daughter-in-law. And you're supposed to be able to write with it and then take a heat gun to it and it makes it like wood burning. So we may practice with this sometime soon. So as you can see now, that's all well blended. You see that a little better? I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to start with my lightest. And I will say, I only like these markers on a thicker paper. I have tried them on thinner paper, and I was not a fan. So, um, get to know your markers if you have any, or if you're planning on getting any. Make sure you get to know them. Just practice. Um, take a page that's maybe not so much your favorite, or print something out on a heavy cardstock. Now back to the lightest. And maybe play with it that way. Just to see. Okay, then to the darkest. And I do find it easier with three colors when I'm working with markers. Just a personal preference for me. And then you can see how that's blotchied. Blotchied, is that a word? So now I'm going to come in with color number two. 
and try to do some blending. Just go back and forth. And then if you need to, you can come back to your lightest and do your tip again. And actually, as that dried, it went ahead and went okay, so don't have to do that. Um, let's see. What about doing letters? Yes. Because it's a little bit different with the markers, too. Let's look at amethyst and lavender. Okay. Amethyst and lavender. And they are dual ends. Okay, the end with the gray is your nice little point, and the other end is your chisel tip. I really don't use the chisel tip that much. Um, I like the nice little ends. And on this one, again, I would do the, the lighter first. So let's just look at the P and the E. And I usually put my lighter color on top. And this time I am only going to do two colors instead of three. Okay, then re wet. And I am by no means an expert on using markers like this. I do not play with alcohol markers much at all. But I just want to show you that it is a, you know, it's, it's always an option. Now back to my first color, and I'm going to try to do some blending. Now, I'm going to show you something else with these markers, too. And I'm just going back and forth till I get it kind of blended. So there you go. We'll just do the E. Um, something else with these markers. Colorless Blender. I am... I'm going to go ahead and use the fat chiseled part. But do you see where it all bled around the outside? Let's see if I can get this to, to work right. It's like an eraser. Okay. Now, I would definitely need to go at this two or three times. But can you see how already that's looking better? And all of this out here will dry clear, and it'll just be up here, and then I'll, I'll go through and do that again. And it already absorbed it, so I don't even have to wipe that off. Now, I will tell you, it did go through to the back. So this area here is wet or moist. There we go. So as that dries, that's going to make that easier. Now, what else can we do with our markers? Let me show you since you've asked. I'm going to grab out these pencils. These are my Newcastle Arts. I'm going to go to the greens. And I am going to go over here to 56. Yeah, I never did finish my um, little things that go behind these yet. But that's all right. I will in time. Let's see. Over here. 56, and then let's see if there's something darker, 55. So back over this page and go to 55 is a little bit darker. Okay, so now then, let's say you just want to use Okay, these are Prussian green and juniper green. Let's say you want to use your markers 
to get that first coat on. Okay, so I wish I hadn't have done both the big ones. Let's look at this one right here. Move some stuff out of the way. Get lined up. All right, so now we're going to do the entire leaf. You know how sometimes when you're coloring, you have that white tooth that's still showing through your paper and you just can't get rid of it? That's where you can use a marker. Now we're going to need to let that dry. So I blow on it. Um, and then you can come back after it's dry and you can work on going over it with some pencils. Yeah, this is really going to take a lot of work. So again, if you're playing with markers, maybe play with a page that's not your favorite. But you can see it is slowly lifting that. All right, back over to this. Okay, that feels dry. It's not moist on the page behind. Now, these two pencils. Uh, let's see. Now, I've already forgotten which one was the lightest one. 53, is that one of them? Nope. Fifty-six and fifty-five. Okay, there's fifty-five. So fifty-six should be the lighter of the two. Yeah, sometimes my hands don't want to work. Speaking of not working, oh, see, 56 and 55 is really close to the same. So I'm going to change real quick and go back in and get maybe 54 and 56. So put that back. Let's go over here and get 54. Yeah, this just lets you see real time, you know, how I do things. So 54 is darker. Okay, so now then, we've got the light there. What I can do is just come over this, look at that, right through that middle area. And already the white is gone. And then I'm just going to do really light here to blend it into the marker. But see, it's already down in all those little crevices. And then with my darker one, I can come here. Yeah, y'all pray for my in-laws there really having trouble remembering things and just not feeling well mid mid 80s so all right and there you go see that was so much faster than using pencils for leaves let's look at this one and i'll show you what i'm talking about so normally I would do the tip. And there's not a lot of tooth in this paper. So that's helpful on getting rid of that white. Okay, so there's that. And then the next shade. And I'm going to go over all that, just to make it a little darker. And I still have white poking through. So I know some people that will go through a page and they'll use like highlighters 
and maybe do all of one area, the leaves green, maybe something in yellow, something in the blue, the pink, the orange, you know the highlighter colors, and then go over all of it with their pencils. And what those highlighters do is get that tooth already covered so that they don't have the problem I'm having here because you can see a difference in this one, how there's still tooth showing, and this one that's really solid. Okay, so that's going to be the difference there. Um, I don't know that I have a highlighter in here. Um, I'm thinking I do not. But you, again, you could use... You know, even, okay, here's, here's a highlighter. Here's a highlighter in yellow. So let's take some yellows and look. Let's just make a mess today. It's a good answer, right? So I'm going to take a light yellow, then a medium yellow, and then maybe something that's more like a um, yellow ochre. All right. So I've got Naples yellow light, lemon yellow, and Naples yellow. If I were using markers, let's just look at the difference here. I would do the tip in the light. This is not looking light, though. This is looking darker, so I guess I should have checked first. So if I take this, I'll just pretend that's the same color. And then the next shade would be here. All right. And then that darker shade, it's not a buttercream. And then I'm going to take the lightest color and blend them all together, okay, just to help blend that. Okay, now, let's see if I just do the lightest. What happens? And then let's say I do a highlighter. And this is why this video is markers for the base coat. Now, I will tell you this marker has already started pulling the paper up. Look at that. Highlighter. So I guess that's something to note. You know? Then I'm going to take my lightest shade right here, my medium, and then my darker. And on the yellow, you can see there's not a huge difference. So I would have to go a lot lighter with that under color. Okay? So I think what this means is you just really have to watch what colors and do some experimenting if you're going to use markers under. Because for our green, it worked great. For this, not so much. This is still wet. So, I'm going to try one more time, and I'm going to just on and back off. Okay? So, I don't have any peel paper this time. See, that was just really quick. It's still wet. It'll be dry pretty quick. Almost. It's still cold. 
Um, rule of thumb when you're painting is if it's still cold, it's still wet. So I'm going to say it's going to be the same thing with the highlighter. If it's still cold, it's still wet. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to take the lightest shade. Then the medium. And then the dark. So I'm saying I don't care for that. Now this is me personally. For the green, I'm still sold on it. Superb. I loved how that worked. I loved how the green worked. I don't like how the yellow worked. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else can we try to play with? Um, yeah, I quite literally don't have highlighters on hand. So I can't, I can't attest to how those are going to work. I can tell you that, that the marker worked pretty good. Let's try, let's try this pink and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the fatter end because I just wanna get the color on there. I'm not worried about staining the lines, being super neat on this, y'all. Just trying to get her done. All right, then, with my pencils, I would come in and pick colors that are darker than that. So that's what I should have done with the yellow, is put on a yellow and then picked colors that were darker. So now I can pick like my number 83, and that is just a medium pink, okay? 83, Bengal Rose Light. That's a different name, isn't it? And I'm still looking for it. 83. Okay, and then I want to go to something that's going to be quite a bit darker. So I'm going to jump to 85. And then... I'm actually going to come over here to something like 86. And yes, that is quite a bit darker, but I want to use that up in here. Okay? So again, this is just trying out this new technique here, starting with markers underneath. And see, that's basically just a little bit darker than what the marker was. Then I'm going to go to my middle shade and get that on here. Then to my darkest, my third shade, because I do want it darker down here where it connects the flower petals all together. Then I'm going to go back to my lightest color and blend it all. Okay, so how did that differ from regular coloring? Let's see. This was my lightest. For one thing, it's a whole lot more vibrant. You can tell that already, right? Then my medium. And then my darkest. Then I'm going to have to come back with my lightest and blend. And I still have white peeking through. So
so much white. All right, so I am going to pick my book up because I really want you to see this if I don't lose focus. Can you see the difference? Same pencils, but this one has the alcohol marker underneath, and this one is just straight pencil. All right. So again, it just depends. This still has white showing through. This one is solid coverage. They both have a little bit of bloom, but the one that's straight on the book has more bloom to it than the other one. Not a whole lot, but a little bit more. And for you that have not been watching me long, to get rid of bloom, clean tissue. Yeah, see, that's not even going to work. That's just tearing it up where the highlighter was. That's just a mess. Okay. Go the direction you colored. You're going to get a little bit on your tissue. It's going to come up. But then, look how much smoother that is. And I want to show you in stages so I can come back again. And this time I'm going to really buff the one right here. Just really buff that. Got a little bit on there again. Now let's see the difference. So I did this one again. I did not do this one again. If I can catch that bloom... Sometimes it's really hard to catch it. And then other times, there we go. See, it's smoother. And you would just keep going. But yeah, that's pretty smooth. It's not showing the, um, it's not showing like this green leaf is probably showing. If I can catch, ah, oh, there we go. See there? You can see all the streakiness of it. That's the bloom where the um, the color actually melts from the friction where it goes on the page. Okay? So, you can see here how much better that does look. I could still go at that one more time to get that out. So that's all for today. I just mainly wanted to show you, if you go through with markers first, I would say alcohol markers, okay? And the color is, they are one of the cheaper alcohol markers out there, I think. But I found alcohol markers to be better than regular markers because they do blend easier. And then this is with alcohol marker underneath. This is without. And then these are just alcohol marker. Okay, this is alcohol marker, then this was highlighter, highlighter again, alcohol marker, no marker. Okay, so for what it's worth, it was just a time to play with markers in the book day. Will I be doing a whole lot of markers underneath? Uh, probably not, because I don't want to have to carry around markers and the pencils. But if I had a page that was really, like, super important to me, would I? Very possibly could. Very possibly. But anyway, so that's it for this. Um, again, I'm going to need to find out where Laura got this for me. I think she got it at Walmart. But um, I'm going to practice with it just a little, and then I'm going to do a video on this sometime in the next week or two, okay? So that's all I know for now. Hope y'all are having a awesome, awesome week, midweek here. And yeah, I didn't have any new coloring books or anything. Um, my daughter did get me a three months 
for somebody on Patreon that's doing um, lettering and stuff, which is a whole lot of fun. And I've done a lettering video before, so if that interests you, you can go back and look that up on my channel. But anyway, all right, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you later. Bye.